Hi everyone, Wonia Thibault here from Buckskin Revolution and season six of Alone, and I'm super excited to share with you some of the things that I learned while trapping in the Arctic on season six. So a little caveat is that I don't consider myself an expert trapper. I didn't go in there with first-hand experience of actually killing animals with snares or other traps. So it is true that I've been studying ancestral skills and survival skills for over 20 years, and so I have a lot of book knowledge, I have a lot of experience playing with deadfalls and other deadfalls and other primitive traps. Um, I've attended workshops and talked to a lot of folks about it, but I haven't lived areas where I could snare and primitive traps are mostly illegal. They're generally illegal unless you're in a true survival situation where your life depends on your trapping. Prior to my time out on a loan, I hadn't done a ton of hunting and the hunting that I had was all with rifles. I was not an advocate of trapping. I, it wasn't something that I wanted to be practicing for sustenance because I didn't feel like it was super humane, you know? And that's really important to me. And I definitely have a different understanding of it now than I did before. And my opinion on that has changed a bit. Done well, I think it absolutely can be humane. And there's no question that trapping is a far more efficient way to bring in calories than hunting with a bow or even sometimes with a rifle because it's passive, right? You set up your traps and then you can be sitting by your comfy fire hanging out while those nocturnal animals are out and roaming. If you're out roaming with your bow or with a rifle, you're using calories to get them, and you're out in the times that they are less likely to be active. And of course, you're also more likely to be disturbing them and sending all of the game out of the area. So for all kinds of reasons, trapping is a really good idea when calories are at a premium and done really well I don't believe that it's any less humane than hunting. In fact, a well-placed snare, you're going to be getting an animal around the neck and it's going to be very likely to be a quick kill as opposed to hunting where it's really about where you get the, the, the shot and, you know, that may or may not be through the vitals. So, you know, it's definitely an issue of debate. So I went out there with a lot of book knowledge and, you know, intellectual knowledge and very little hands-on experience. So I was really learning as I went. That said, I also am someone who has spent a lot of time in the woods and studied biology and ecology. So I, I definitely have a knowledge of animals and wildlife behavior, and that certainly was very helpful, but it's not the same thing as really trapping experience. That said, there is no better way to really learn than when you have been very hungry for a long time and when your life is depending on it. I was in a unique situation out there because I didn't bring snare wire. And I've talked in other videos about, about why it was a last minute decision because the winds were so fierce pre-launch and I wasn't planning on having paracord. I had planned on snare wire and at the last minute I switched those out because the paracord seemed really key for shelter building and other things with all of that wind. And I didn't have a lot of experience snaring so it didn't seem like something that was likely to be as critical. I had a lot of time to regret that decision. Um, that said, obviously I did figure out snaring with fishing line and paracord. So I was able to do it, but it was a huge handicap not having that snare wire. It was very, very tricky and very time, energy, and calorie intensive doing it without snare wire because snare wire is rigid and you don't bite through snare wire. So you can set snares all kinds of places counting on the cinching effect of the wire and it being stiff enough to hold that animal and then them not being able to get out of it, right? Fishing line is loose and floppy and it is absolutely chewable. So not only are the critters able to snip it out of their way if they decide they don't like it, but also once caught, they can sniff their way out of it unless you have some mechanism to get them up off their feet so their weight is actually up off of that snare. Now, in some ways, it's perhaps more humane to have snares like this because when the, that animal's weight is hanging from the snare, then it's gonna be a quicker kill, but it is 
far, far more energy intensive. And my location was very limiting because with the spring pole snares I was doing, I had to have a way to drive stakes into the ground. And I had very little soil. It was mostly rock or sphagnum moss. And of course, as time went on, the ground was mostly frozen. So it was really challenging finding areas where I could put my snares up. That said, I feel like that land really wanted me there and wanted to work with me and taught me so well. I felt like I had a relationship with those animals and I went there with so much humility and gratitude explaining who I was and what I was there for and asking for the gift of their life and making offerings to the critters, to the ancestors, to the land. And I felt like that was received and the land and the animals really wanted to work with me. So I have so much gratitude and felt so blessed in the ways that, that things worked out for me out there. And uh, yeah, I couldn't have done it alone. I couldn't have beaten that land in the submission. I had to work with the land and it had to work with me. And uh, yeah, it worked out in beautiful ways. 